Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Molly Tibbetts' life taken by illegal alien and here's who let him into the USA. A 24-year-old illegal immigrant from Mexico has been charged with the murder of missing Molly Tibbetts. Cristian Rivera, 24, was charged on Tuesday after leading police to the cornfield where he dumped Molly's body after attacking her on July 18 in Brooklyn, Iowa. Rivera, who has been in the U.S. illegally for between four and seven years but is from Guayabilo and Guerrero, Mexico, followed her in his dark Chevy Malibu as she ran at around 7.30 p.m. on July 18. Do the math, he came here under President Obama's terms. And possibly could be a dreamer if it was more towards the seven-year mark. He blacked out and attacked her after she threatened to call the police unless he left her alone. Rivera was identified by surveillance footage obtained in the last couple of weeks from someone's home. It showed him following the student in his car and Molly running ahead of him. It is not yet clear how Molly died. Rivera told police that after seeing her, he pulled over and parked his car to get out and run with her. Molly grabbed her phone and threatened to call the police before running off ahead. The suspect said that made him panic and he chased after her. That's when he blacked out. He claims he remembers nothing from then until he was back in his car, driving. He then noticed one of her earphones sitting on his lap and blood in the car then remembered he'd stuffed her in the truck. Rivera drove her then to a cornfield where he hauled her body out of the truck and hid her beneath corn stalks. He was arrested on Friday after police honed in on his vehicle by viewing surveillance footage obtained from a private resident's home surveillance cameras. He followed her and seemed to be drawn to her on that particular day. For whatever reason he chose to abduct her, Iowa Department of Criminal Investigation Special Agent Rick Ryan said on Tuesday afternoon. Rivera told police he had seen her in the area before. She is friends on Facebook with the mother of his daughter but it is not clear if he and Molly knew each other. Dailymail.com understands that Rivera was doing seasonal work for a local dairy farm in Brooklyn. He lived with a number of other migrant workers on a secluded farmhouse in Brooklyn owned by their employer. Law enforcement arrived at the property at around 3 p.m. Monday afternoon according to a neighbor. FBI agents were still searching the house and a number of nearby trailers on Tuesday afternoon. Neighbors said the building housed a revolving door of hired migrant workers but that they had never caused any problems. Workers associated with the farm told DailyMail.com that they barely knew Rivera but confirmed that he lived there with a girlfriend named Iris Menares and their baby. They said Iris had gone to stay with her mother after Rivera was arrested in Molly's murder. Rivera has been living illegally in Iowa for between four and seven years. A. Rivera has been living illegally in Iowa for between four and seven years. FBI agents attended another nearby property belonging to the farm overnight Monday to quiz Rivera's co-workers, most of whom claim only to understand Spanish. There was a panic when they arrived because they thought at first that it was ICE launching a raid, a local source told DailyMail.com. A lot of these people arrive with forged documents. But it turned it was the FBI and it was about Molly. Molly was staying alone overnight in her boyfriend's home the night she went missing and was last seen going for a jog in the neighborhood at around 8 p.m. But what happened afterwards has remained a complete mystery for weeks. Her boyfriend opened a Snapchat photograph from her at 10 p.m. which appeared to suggest that she was indoors but it is not known what time Molly sent it. In his arrest warrant, police describe Rivera's chilling confession. Rivera admitted to making contact with the female running in Brooklyn and that he pursued her in his vehicle in an area east of Brooklyn. Defendant Rivera stated he parked the vehicle, got out and was running behind her and alongside of her. Rivera stated that she grabbed her phone and said, I'm gonna call the police. Rivera said he then panicked and he got mad and that he blocked his memory which is what he does when he gets very upset and doest remember anything after that until he came to at an intersection. Rivera stated he then made a U-turn, drove back to an entrance to a field and then drove into a driveway to a cornfield. He noticed there was a near piece from headphones in his lap and that this is how he realized he put her in the trunk. He went to get her out of the trunk and he noticed blood on the side of her head. He described the female's clothing, what she was wearing including an earphone or headphone set. He described that he dragged Tibbets on foot from his vehicle to a secluded location in a cornfield. He put her over his shoulder and took her about 20 meters into the cornfield and he left her covered in some corn leaves and that he left her there, face up. Among his social media photographs are pictures of weapons proudly displayed on a bed. How Molly died remains a mystery. The defendant was able to use his phone to determine the route he traveled from Brooklyn. Rivera then later guided law enforcement to her location for memory, the affidavit continues. 
Rivera's arrest and the discovery of the student's body brings an end to five weeks of tireless investigation by the FBI, the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation and local sheriffs. Last week, the FBI said it believed she had been abducted by someone she knew. They warned that the person was hiding in plain sight and had even attended vigils held in her honor but no arrests were made. A $400,000 fund for her safe return was established but it did not produce any leads either. Greg Wally of Crime Stoppers of Central Iowa said her family and investigators would dedicate their resources to catching her killer once they catch their breath. The Iowa Department of Criminal Investigation refused to share details of the discovery on Tuesday when contacted by DailyMail.com. Last week, the student's heartbroken family and boyfriend had a private meeting with Vice President Mike Pence and an award fund for information about the case reached hundreds of thousands of dollars. The only person who had been visibly scrutinized by police after she went missing was pig farmer Wayne Cheney. He was grilled by officers more than once and had his property searched twice after search crews found a red t-shirt that was similar to one owned by the student near his land. It was never established if the t-shirt did in fact belong to Molly. Cheney maintained his innocence throughout media interviews and took a polygraph test to try to rule himself out. He was never charged. In the past few days, Molly's father Rob Tibbetts, who has been in Iowa since she disappeared, went to California for a break. He said he had been urged by authorities to do so and that it was a halfway point in the investigation. Rob was not in the state when his daughter disappeared. Her boyfriend, Dalton Jack, was away for work when she disappeared as was his older brother Blake. The youngsters lived together in a home in Brooklyn with Blake's fiancé who was also cleared. As the hunt for her intensified, authorities set up a website that was dedicated to finding her. It provided a map detailing five locations police considered to be significant. The website also offered a tips page which generated hundreds of clues about what may have happened to her. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.